Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in the world. Thank you so much for tuning into my channel today. I've been reacting to a bunch of different videos from the Netherlands to Denmark to the UK to Spain to France, and I'm so excited to dive deeper into more countries and cultures of the world. Wherever you are in the world right now, comment down below, let me know, and let me know what I should check out from your country. I had someone comment from Belize on one of my recent videos, and the truth is, I know absolutely nothing about Belize, and I would love to learn some. So I'm going to dive into Geography Now, Belize, and let me know down below, if you are from Belize, what do you think I should know about the country, and anything you think I should check out. With that being said, let's d jump into it. I told you, welcome to Latin America, the place where people speak English, and to a lesser extent German, you would call me crazy. Well, you'd best start believing that there's a, that such, it's, that there's in such a, it's, it's called Belize. Nailed it! It's time to learn geography. Now! Hey everybody, I'm your host, Paul Barbato. Ah, Belize, Central America's most adorable little anomaly. But first, you know the drill, let's dissect the flag. Oh boy, here we go, a flag with a lot of things to look at and a lot of symbolism. Okay, first of all, the flag is basically just a flag with the coat of arms. The backdrop is royal blue with red stripes trimming the top and bottom, a white disc in the center with the coat of arms. The blue and white represent the People's Union Party and the red represents the United Democratic Party of Belize, the two major political parties of the country. The coat of arms contains two dudes, a mestizo guy holding an ax and a black guy holding a paddle to indicate the major demographical ethnicities of Belize. Keep in mind, Belize and Malta are the only sovereign nations to have humans depicted on their flag. Behind the men is a mahogany tree and a shield supported by the hands of the men, tierced per pal inverted, which means divided into three parts, upside down in a Y shape, and the first left argent, a paddle and a squaring axe, and the second one to the right, a beating axe and a crosscut saw, and the last one on the bottom, a sailing ship. These items illustrate the historical foundation of Belize being a nation founded upon logging and the seafaring residents. Around the men are 50 leaves connected by a circle branch signifying the year year 1950 when the People's Union Party was established and took power. Under the men, you have the nation's motto on a curled parchment, sub umbra floreo, which means under the shade I flourish. Now that's a cool motto, under the shade I flourish. I mean, who wants to be out in the hot, humid sun all day? Also, I would like to take this moment to announce that this was the longest time we ever spent explaining a flag here on Geography Now. Thanks, Belize! <laughs> you just blew Afghanistan out of the water. I, um, I... I, I didn't mean it. Ask it. Here's where Belize is located. Nailed it. All right. Belize's geographical location is very unique because it's technically kind of considered the gateway between the Caribbean and the Central American region. First of all, Belize is located on the east coast of the Central American region of North America, east of the very end tip of Mexico and Guatemala with the Caribbean Sea to the east. <coughs> Although it looks like it. I got to be honest. I didn't know where it was. I didn't know exactly where it was. So, you guys down in Belize, you must have to watch the hurricanes this time of year also, huh? So I know you guys get some pretty nasty ones down there. To the untrained eye, the west border of Belize is actually not a straight line, and in about two-thirds of the mark heading north from the southern tip around the town of Banque Viejo del Carmen, the borderline tilts ever so slightly at about a five-degree angle and continues up until the northern river in Mexico. Belize has over 400 islands, islets, and keys along its coast in the Caribbean, including one of the largest and inhabited ones, Ambergris Key, which, if it weren't for that one small little bi-coastal separating creek, it would technically be an exclave attached to Mexico's Costa Mesa Peninsula. By the way, for those of you who don't know, ambergris is an incredibly rare and expensive substance used in perfumes, basically made out of aged, waxy, buoyant, flammable sperm whale vomit. Hey everybody, I'm a sperm whale. <laughs> Cha-ching! A lot of the Keys and Islets are actually home to world-famous resorts and beaches that tourists, especially from English-speaking nations, flock to for vacation getaways. The capital is Belmopan, located in the Cayo District near the center of the country. The capital used to be Belize City, which to this day is still the largest city and center hub for all commercial and economic activity. However, cue the motion graphic, after extensive damage done by Hurricane Hattie back in the late 60s, yeah. Belize literally built an entirely new capital about 80 kilometers or 50 miles inland. That's a lot like the story I've told on this channel before, where I live here in Galveston. Long story short, in 1900, the deadliest storm of United States history, 
the, the great storm of 1900. Galveston, Texas, back in the day, they thought was going to be the new capital of Texas. It was like the Manhattan of the South. It was a major trade port. Um, a lot of people wanted it to be the capital of Texas. Uh, but once that storm of 1900 came, the city was never the same. They never talked about it being the capital again. Instead, the capital was Austin, or Waterloo, as it was called back then. But yeah, that's kind of that's kind of a similar story. Those hurricanes, man, those things are nasty. They chose a really interesting and kind of morbid <coughs> spot, though, because apparently it's only about 16 kilometers away from the crystal maiden of Aktun Tunichil Muknal Cave, also known as the cave with sparkling calcified skeletons of children that were kind of... Yeah, read up on ancient Mayan culture. In fact, Belize oh, is wow. home to over 900 ancient Mayan sites That's kind of spooky. All over. In fact, the tallest building in Belize is a Mayan temple, the Caracole Mayan Ruins. The town cost only $24 million to build, or after inflation rates, today would only be about $73 million. That's actually kind of cheap, considering that many airports alone cost several times more than that. Belize is also interesting because it's one of the only three non-island nations to be part of CARICOM, or the Caribbean community. Ugh, that would have made such a great transition into the demographics, but... We have to stay with the format. Here's what the landscape looks like. Yay, advertisements. You're very special, kid. I've been questioning. Oh, guys, do any of y'all like The Mandalorian? Let me know in the comments below. Completely unrelated, but I love The Mandalorian. I to take you back to the Jedi. When entering <clears throat> Belize, you won't Belize your eyes. <laughs> no, but seriously, to put it simply, Belize is a tropical wonderland. Because of the low population density, a huge portion of the land, about 60%, especially inland, is forest, most of which is undisturbed. This makes an ideal home to over 5,000 species of plants and hundreds of different animals, including monkeys, leopards, snakes, frogs, armadillos, bear shark octopuses, debatable, toucans, cotamundis, tapirs, scarlet macaws, and tree otters, and kinkajous, not kinky. Jews, kinkajous, y'all nasty. Wow, such beautiful wildlife. Have anyone, anyone who lives in Belize, have you, what's the craziest encounter you ever had with wildlife in your country? Let me know down below. Belize is also home to the first and only jaguar preservation reserve in the world, Coxcomb Wildlife Sanctuary. And that's not even including the coast. In fact, Belize has the second largest barrier reef in the world after Australia's Great Barrier Reef and is a hot spot for scuba enthusiasts. Speaking of which, one spot that Belize is absolutely famous for is the Big Blue Hole, located on the Lighthouse Reef Atoll, about 70 kilometers or 40 miles off the mainland. And this spot is a huge circular submarine sinkhole that goes down for about 120 meters or 400 feet, where you can go into the hole and you'll be greeted by several colorful species of fish like parrotfish, angelfish, lionfish, trumpetfish, balloonfish, bear shark to push fish, debatable. Chances are, if you can think of any noun, it's probably a fish and it's probably in the waters of Belize. Despite the abundance of fish and fishing being a huge part of the industry, Belize is actually very concerned about maintaining the reefs and has actually became the first country in the world to ban bottom trawling or seafloor fishnet dragging. In terms of agriculture, about 20% of the land is covered in cultivated land, even though the potential for more is actually totally available. And to to this day, bananas and plantains alone make up about 15% of all exports. Agricultural exports altogether make up about 40%. Inland to the south, you reach the Maya Mountains, the highest area of the country, home to the highest point, Doyle's Delight, as well as numerous ancient Mayan sites hidden amongst the hills. Back I would love to see some of those sites. That would be so incredible. In the 19th century, New World excavation was like the hottest thing to do that everyone was jumping on. And Belize was a favorite spot amongst many numerous British archeologists. But the British surprisingly aren't the largest white minority in Belize. You'll never believe who it is actually. It's actually kind of funny. <laughs> To make things short, Belize is small but incredibly mixed. The country has a population of about 340,000 people. About half of the country identifies as ethnically mestizo, about 25% identifies as Creole or Afro-Belizean, and then you have about 12% that identifies as indigenous Mayan. Yes, people, that's right, Mayans still exist. They didn't die out. You're thinking about the Olmecs. And then you have about 6% identifying as Garinagu, or people who are a mix between black and Amerindian. About 4% are Indian, like from India, Indian. And here's where things get really funny. Another 4 
4% of the population is actually German, or technically German-speaking Russian Mennonites. That's right, Mennonites, not to be confused with the Amish. Although they do look very similar and they have similar values, there is a difference. Originally, they are descended from Mennonites that started in the Russian Empire in the late 1800s, that moved to Canada, then to the US, then to Mexico, and then finally in the 1950s, settled in Belize. Altogether, there are about 12,000 Mennonites, most of whom are ethnically white and speak Plattdeutsch, or a dialect of German. Funnier still, in addition, there are about 2,000 or so non-white people that have converted to Mennonitism, making it one of the few places in the world where you can see black and mestizo people donning the traditional plain trademark clothing of the Mennonite community. Belize is also interesting too in the fact that it is the only country in Central America that speaks English as an official language, and a lot of the people in Belize though speak Belizean Creole, which is basically a heavily Caribbean-influenced accent of the English language with distinct vocabulary word switches and written in a very basic phonetical structure. For example, the word language is written language. When we get to the Haiti video, you'll notice that they basically did the exact same thing, but with French. Each region is kind of distinct in its populace. For example, in the south, in Stan Creek, you have high populations of Garifunas, who <coughs> speak and dress differently from the people in the north, like in Corozal and Orange Walk, which, by the way, has a high population of Mayan people. Closer to the coast... Such a diverse little country. So cool. You have the Creoles and inland, don't be surprised to find the Mennonites. Eventually, Belize gained its self governing autonomous status in the 20th century and full independence in 1981, but still remains a Commonwealth country of the UK. Speaking of ties to other countries. Belize is, without a doubt, a joyful little gipper. It's funny though, because diplomatically, Belize is kind of technically closer to their Caribbean neighbor nations, but geographically, they're still kind of surrounded by and attached to Central America. This circumstance factors in heavily in how Belize plays on the playground. They have a ton of memberships into multilateral alliances, such as CARICOM, Interpol, the ACP, IMF, UNESCO, WTO, WTF, debatable, the UN, IFC, and many more. Basically, if you can think of an acronym, Belize is probably part of it. Nonetheless, recently, they've been working harder to invest in the Central American ties to complement the historical ties that they have to the Caribbean. Spanish is commonly spoken as a second language to most of the population as interactions between their neighbors are common. Nicaragua and Mexico are close friends of Belize as they all have developed bilateral agreements fairly well and conduct business on a relatively well level with each other. Guatemala, however, has a little bone to pick with Belize as they have disputes over territorial claims, as in they believe all of Belize should belong to Guatemala. In 1981, they oh. recognized Belize's independence. However, decades later, the dispute still lingers ever so slightly to the minds of Guatemalans. Belize is also one of the few countries that recognizes Taiwan as an independent sovereign state. It all started with some Taiwanese Belizean guy named William Quinto who was into politics, yada yada yada, they built ties with Taiwan. When it comes to their best friends, more or less they might consider the US and the UK. As a former colony and commonwealth, the UK still keeps a close embrace on Belize and in fact, Prince Harry even visited in 2012 on a commonwealth tour. In honor, the Belizeans renamed a boulevard in the capital as Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II Boulevard. The US has has been and still is the largest economic aid provider and investor, especially in funds and business. Doing business in Belize is actually surprisingly easy and only requires a few steps for registration and licensing, allowing Americans to focus on utilizing Belize's tactical position and policies for growth on both countries. Wow, I actually wrote that. Dang, I'm getting better at this. In your face, Mr. Kleppenberger, who gave me an F on my English test on the first day of school. Granted, I didn't do the summer reading, but still. In conclusion, Belize may be both a Caribbean and Central American nation, but in all honesty, it really kind of isn't neither one either. I mean, where else are you going to find black Mennonites wearing bonnets, speaking German, with toucans in their backyards, and English-speaking Mayans diving into 400-foot deep holes? Belize. It's Belize. Stay tuned. Benin is coming up next. That was way more interesting than I ever would have imagined. I really want to learn more about Belize now. Let me know if you're from Belize, how you feel about living in Belize, and let me know what I should check out from your country. Also guys, I make much more than reaction videos, I do interviews with local entrepreneurs, business owners, and artists in my area, and I would love for you to check those out on my channel, or you can go to patreon.com backslash localia, where you can see full-length vlogs, behind the scenes, deleted scenes, and much, much more. With that being said, I look forward to hearing from you, and I will see you soon.